Before I get into today's video, remember to follow me on Twitter. So my Twitter, the link is in the description below. You can also find me. My handle is at Jackson Kruger. Come over, say hi. And anyways, back to your regularly scheduled video. I'm beginning to wonder if there is a curse in the New York Giants area of they can never have a good left tackle because I don't know what it is. It, it seems like they put a lot of resources into it and it hasn't quite worked out. I like Andrew Thomas. I like Andrew Thomas a lot out of the draft and towards the end of last season it seemed like he was really putting it together and then this happens and you know gives up two sacks everyone's going crazy so how bad of a preseason performance was it well it wasn't great I mean he, he did give up a couple of sacks and another pressure so like that's not good you don't want that to happen um although I do would have to say some of these plays are a bit uh not all his fault he's playing on an entire bad offensive line that hurts everybody. You know, football is a team sport. And mo in most sacks, it's not just one guy getting beat. It's multiple guys getting beat. So let's get into the film study and talk about how that came into play here. So we'll start off with this play. What's going to happen is that it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup. He's going up a one-on-one -on -one against an edge rusher right here. And so one of the interesting things about Thomas is a big aspect of his game was his lateral movement in college. The fact that he can move side to side so well. That's one of the things that he was, you know, largely hyped up for, among other things. I mean, he was considered to be a can't-miss prospect, so of course he's the one who struggles, right? That seems to be how it always goes. But, you know, for a left tackle, it's his left hand that's going to be super important. That left hand is going to be vital. If he can attach that left hand the way he wants to, this could be a good situation because at that point, I mean, it's really difficult to get around the edge when there's the left hand is on, you know, 55 for New England's sort of right shoulder area or right pec area. And so, like, look, right when this play starts, that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to get his hand right there. But I just feel like it's just it's almost like he plays without fingers on his left hand sometimes where it's just hard for him to get that exact hand placement he wants. 55 is doing a great job at not allowing him to latch on with that left hand, which now means that it's going to be really difficult for him to win this matchup. And look, as you see, he just isn't able to uh, keep that edge right there. Should be mentioned, bit of a deep drop for Daniel Jones, who's about nine yards deep. Uh, but again, he kind of had to be because uh, 70 for New England kind of beat up on the guard there as well. So again, most sacks happen because something else went wrong as well. That wasn't a horrible play from Thomas because, you know, I mean, listen, he did actually won the play uh, ended. He got his right hand on the 55. Uh, you know, side area and pushed him behind Jones, that would have typically worked if it wasn't such a deep drop. So it's hard to put all of that sack on him, although statistically that is how it will work. But I would still say not a tremendous play at the very start of it, in my opinion. There was also this play where he's it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup once again. And uh, what's going to happen here is going to be a bit interesting because it's not going to be just a speed rush like we saw last time. I mean, look how Thomas, right off the bat, you know, seemingly is in an okay position, right? He has both his hands latched on, but here's where things get a little bit tricky. So what 70 for New England is going to do is get his left hand and kind of pull Thomas over, and then with his right hand, he's just going to do a swim move. That's how this is going to work. And again, watch how well it works out. Look, he just pulls off this move incredibly well. It was really, it was his right hand, excuse me, who, which pulled him off to his side, does the swim move, gets past him, and, you know, luckily for them this time Jones was able to get the ball away but still that's a quick pressure right there and that was not the intention for Andrew Thomas to allow that pressure to happen that quickly now I would say you know there was some positives I thought the run blocking game was good uh, which again uh, obviously you don't want to think this way at this point you still have hope for him to be a good tackle but it does give you hope that maybe you could at least have a good guard if the tackle thing doesn't work out. Again, it's too early to make that declaration yet, I would say. But what's going to happen here is he is going up one-on-one -on -one against a defensive lineman. And watch how far he's going to push him back. Because keep in mind, it's a fourth down and one. You don't care about getting a touchdown here. You just need to get the one yard. The difference between zero yards and one yard is everything on this play. And look, he does a very good job of just moving that line of scrimmage up a little bit, you know, helps them get the first down right there. That's a good run blocking play. So there was some positives for sure, especially in the run blocking game. Obviously, the main issues, they just were, they were in the passing game. I actually think this play is a great example of one of the things that I, need, I noticed Thomas needs to just do a better job at. So, you know, I talked about his great lateral movement in college, right? That's something that he did such a good job of. Well, 
kind of the issue is that he never had to play from behind in college. He's only had to learn how to do that in the NFL because, I mean, he was never really playing from behind. He was always in a position of strength. But what's going to happen on this play is there's going to be a slight move. So again, watch Thomas's left arm right here. So look, you see the slight move. He gets past that left hand. Thomas already in a position of trouble, right? Because he can't get the left hand the way he wants to, but that's okay. When you get beat, what you want to then do is get your left hand, ideally if you can get it on uh, 91 sort of left pack area, and then you get your right hand, you kind of want it on the hip of 91, and you push it past Jones. Now, again, one clear issue that you've noticed of Jones is a lot of deep drops, which, you know, in this scenario, I don't think is horrible. The other ones aren't bad either. Well, you know, when there's pressure up the middle, you kind of have to. So that's where things get a little bit tough. And for Thomas, he it's a little bit of a negative where he has to play for the Giants offensive line, which doesn't have a lot of talent around him. It's easier when you're a Tristan Wirfs and come in and just start playing for a great uh, offensive line. Uh, you know, Jedrick Wills, another example. Whereas for Thomas, it is a bit of a negative for him because he has to play for the Giants offensive line. Although another clear negative is that that right hand is just, it's not doing anything right here. He's trying to push this guy one-handed basically because he never got that hand placement right. And watch his, watch Thomas's right hand. I mean, look, it's like he's giving him a back rub right there trying to make it work. And that just, that's just not going to happen. And there was some contact that helped lead to that sack. He did kind of push Jones back. I don't know if there was no other pressure. I don't think that would have been a sack. In fact, if there was no other pressure on both of the sacks he gave up, I don't think they would have been sacks, but that doesn't make them then good plays. He still did get beat on both of those plays, just maybe not as badly as the statistics would show. So yeah, that's mainly what I thought about Thomas's uh, performance. And listen, uh, it's a preseason game. For all we know, he's trying to do a new technique and he's struggling with it for that way. That, that's what you tell yourself if, if you're a Giants fan, I think, so that way you can sleep at night. Uh, the reality is it, it's just a weird situation. And I think that you know there still are some things Thomas has to improve on. And it's frustrating because for the Giants, you spent a premium pick, the number four overall pick. You're supposed to be like elite by now. You are. You know, he was supposed to be Tristan Wirfs, who just comes in and is like, uh, you know, a fringe all pro player immediately. That's what Thomas was supposed to be. And the fact that there were four major tackles, they draft the first one with the highest pick and he's looked the worst. It's it's frustrating because it, it, it really is. And so the drafting is hard at the same time, though. He's young. We do have to give him some more time. So hopefully he turns it around. Uh, and, and I think there's still hope. I'm not going to panic because of this one bad preseason game. I still think that uh, the chance of him being at least a good left tackle, which has a ton of value, uh, is still relatively high. So that's that's uh, my opinion on Thomas. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.